Okay, a quick uh, overview of question one, uh, which is from exercises 4.6 in your lecture notes, uh, EGM 90 Advanced Aerodynamics. Uh, the question asks you, it's a quite a simple uh, question that says a nozzle, and we're going to assume this is a condi nozzle, um, has an exit area uh, one and a half times the throat area. And then it asks what values of static pressure or what values of the ratio of static pressure to stagnation pressure at the exit would first of all give you the single sonic condition at the throat followed by subsonic flow and then uh, sonic conditions at the throat followed by purely supersonic flow at the exit from the nozzle. So let's just sketch the situation we've got. So we're going to assume that we have a condi nozzle with an upstream stagnation pressure of P0 and a throat area which we're going to call A star and a static pressure at the exit Px And the only thing that the question tells us is that the ratio of the exit area to the throat area is 1.5. So we're going to say AX over A star is equal to 1.5. Now we know that if the nozzle is choked, i.e. if there is a sonic condition at the throat, we can we know that the Mach number at the throat is 1 and that m dot root cp t naught over a p naught at the throat is 1.281. And this allows us to compute what that non-dimensional mass flow rate would be at the exit simply by saying m dot root cp t naught over a at the exit p naught is equal to now this is only true in the absence of shock waves. And also if you remember from the lectures we're making the assumption that the boundary layers are so thin that we can effectively ignore them. So we can write that because if there are no shock waves in the nozzle then P0 is a constant all the way through the nozzle from the upstream conditions all the way to the exit. So m dot root cp t0 over ax p0 is simply m dot root cp t0 over a star, the area at the throat p0, times the ratio of uh, a star to a0. And we know by looking in our compressible flow tables, or just because we memorize the number, that m dot root cp t naught over a p naught at sonic conditions is 1.281, a number that we're using an awful lot in these kind of problems. So that is equal to 1 over 1.5. And if you throw that into a calculator, you will get out the number 0.85. So our non-dimensionalized mass flow rate at the exit from the duct is 0.854. And then what we do is we look at our compressible flow tables. So let's make a note that we're going to be doing that from So we know that there are two possible conditions here. Either so when the flow reaches sonic, the sonic point at the throat, it can either then continue accelerating supersonically in the diverging section, because if the flow is greater than Mach 1 in a diverging section, it will be accelerating, or it can decelerate and go back to a subsonic condition and decelerate, because a flow that's at a, a Mach number less than 1 in a diverging section will be decelerating. So you just take your uh, compressible gas flow tables, 
scroll down until you find m dot root cp t naught over a p naught that value that column value is equal to 0 0.854 and you will find that there are two mac numbers that give you that either the mac number at the exit is 0 0.4 3 so that's obviously the subsonic condition or the Mach number at the exit is equal to 1.855 you can then scroll across in the tables to find whoop, to find the ratio of P to P naught so at M equals 0 0.43 P over P naught is equal to 0 0.8807. For the supersonic case, where the flow is purely supersonic, no shock waves in the duct, P over P naught is 0 0.161. So it might sound like a difficult problem when it's set, but actually, using the compressible flow tables, it's uh, a very straightforward thing to work out. Uh, your P over P naught values that give you either purely subsonic flow or pure supersonic flow with no shock waves. Of course, the pressure ratio between the conditions upstream and downstream needs to be much greater to get the, the supersonic flow. You need a, a pressure ratio of 0 0.161. So you're dropping your static pressure at the exit much further compared to the stagnation pressure upstream to achieve supersonic conditions.